Complete training is available on itdvds.com. Now let's begin the training. Since the user interface in Windows Vista is different than Windows XP, real quickly we're going to go over some of the major differences, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because in the following movies we're going to use just about every aspect of the user interface. So we'll learn about it then. But real quickly, the first thing we notice is the sidebar. And this sidebar has what's called gadgets on them. And gadgets are just little programs that allow us to perform small functions or view information quickly, such as the time. Or, for example, this one scrolls through pictures. This one allows us to view RSS headlines. To remove a gadget, we can just click on the X next to the gadget, and that will remove it. If we'd like to change the position of a gadget, we can just click on it and drag it or we can click on the handle here next to it and drag it. If we'd like to add a gadget, we can click on the plus sign here. And this gives us a list of gadgets available to us. We can click on one, and if we'd like to find out more about the gadget, click on the Show Details button, and this lets us know what the gadget does. For example, this one converts from one currency to another. If we'd like to view more gadgets, we can click on Get More Gadgets Online. To add the gadget, simply click and drag it over to your sidebar. To view the properties of your sidebar, we can right click on it and then click on properties. Notice we can also close the sidebar from here if we'd like. I'm going to click on properties and if we'd like we can select whether or not we want the sidebar to start when Windows starts. By default it's checked arrangement. We could have the sidebar always on top of other windows if we'd like, so if we had other programs running, the sidebar would always be viewable. We could select whether we want the sidebar to be on the right-hand side like it is now, or the left-hand side. Also, if we had multiple monitors hooked up to our computer, we could select which monitor we wanted the sidebar to be on. If we have a number of gadgets on our sidebar and we can't even see them all, we can also view the list of running gadgets by clicking on that button, and then we can select one and remove it if we'd like. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the start menu. You notice the start menu doesn't say start anymore but it's in the same location. I'll just click on it and the first difference we'll probably notice is that the flyout menus are gone. If I click on all programs notice the menu doesn't fly out it just shows up in this menu box. And if I need to go back, I have to click on the back button. Also, there's a search bar, and this search bar is really nice. If you're trying to launch a program such as, let's say, Notepad, you can just start typing in the name of the program. And I'll just start typing it in, and you'll notice Windows searches for it automatically. So I could click on Notepad, or I could just hit the Enter button to launch it if I'd like. The next thing we're going to take a look at is Windows Explorer. To launch Windows Explorer, I can just hold down the Windows key and press E if I'd like, or I'll go to the Start menu, click on Computer. Now Windows Explorer is fairly similar to what it was in Windows XP. You can click on a folder on the left hand side and it'll, it will show the contents on the right hand side, but the major difference as I drill down you'll see is this breadcrumb style navigation. Before we would have C colon backslash the path to where we were at. Now we have a more of a menu where we can actually, let's drill down a little bit further so you can see what I mean. We can actually go back to a previous folder and view other folders in that folder and then select a folder. So it allows us to jump around more quickly and easily. And of course if we wanted to type in the path, we could still do that by clicking on the arrow button on the right hand side and then we can just go ahead and type in the path if we'd like. The next thing I'd like to talk about real quick is Windows Arrow user interface and you'll probably hear that a lot and it's just an interface that is part of Windows Vista and it just makes smoother transitions, transparency, it gives you some 3D effects, things like that and your Windows Vista com computer can either be Vista capable or Vista premium ready and in order to use the Arrow interface your computer needs to be Vista premium ready. In order to be Vista premium ready your processor needs to be at least one gigahertz you need to have at least one gigabyte of RAM 
you need to be able to have support for the DirectX 9 graphics with a Windows Display Driver model driver and you need at least 128 megabytes of graphics memory you also need 40 gigabytes of hard drive capacity with 15 gigs free you need a DVD-ROM, audio output and internet access so if you meet all that criteria you are Vista Premium ready and you can use the Aero interface the reason your computer has to meet certain criteria in order to be Vista Premium ready is that the bottom line is is it uses more resources, it uses more memory, processor, and you'll find that Vista uses more resources. But it can be deceiving because Vista uses resources in a different way. And we're going to talk about that later on. So if you take a look at the task manager, it's not as bad as it looks. And again, we'll, we'll go over this later on. But the bottom line is, is it does use more resources, resources than Windows XP, just like Windows XP uses more resources than Windows 2000. So those are the major user interface additions. Now there are a bunch more, and we're going to see pretty much all of them as we go through the next movies.